Live from the parking lot of Home Depot, Sacramento, California. On a very pleasant but soon to be scorching August day. Here I want to. Oh, look at my Ganesha there. Oh, there's my Ganesha. He's on the other side. There he is. Okay. Here's a new parking lot for us. I think I've never done a show from from uh, the Home Depot parking lot. I found myself a nice shady spot here. Constance is going to be gone in there for a couple hours, probably. And let me just uh, see if my happy face is on here any place. Let's see. There I am. Good morning. Let me set up my uh, technology here. Excuse my uh, informal appearance, but uh, it's going to be so hot today I couldn't really dress too. I got bad hair even. Okay. I just uh, advertised that... Uh, uh, do I believe in God? And Alistair Crowley answers the question. And uh, I am going to actually read in Alistair Crowley's own words his answer to that question. But first, I want to uh, uh, give you a suggestion. If you don't already, uh, already have in your library a book that's been published as Magic Without Tears. Okay, now I was lucky enough to have a, get a Magic Without Tears uh, early on in the late 70s, uh, uh, and I forget which edition it was, but uh, there, uh, after that, th there were several other editions, including two that were published by... Uh, uh, Falcon Press, which later turned to New Falcon Press, that that in turn then split into New Falcon Press and Original Falcon Press. But at the time, it was just Falcon Press that uh, published uh, uh, Magic Without Tears. Now, Magic Without Tears was written and compiled and edited and everything by Crowley in the last very, very last years of his life. That and the Book of Thoth were the, the two uh, almost final contributions of, of Crowley. And uh, as a matter of fact, under his, uh, under his bed in the room that he died was the manuscript and uh, notes for Magic Without Tears. Now, Magic Without Tears is Crowley's answers to letters that uh, were written to him by uh, uh, several women disciples. Now, I think we've, we've actually been able to identify uh, who at least one of those uh, uh, querents uh, were, but as I'm not completely sure I just want to stick my neck out and say uh, who it was, but it, it's someone that you're likely uh, not to uh, to recognize in our uh, pantheon of Thelemic uh, characters of that time period. What's good about Magic Without Tears is that Crowley is doing his best in his most charming and polite way, and as we all know, Crowley was not always always polite, but in his own way, he was always charming. But he answers fundamental questions like all of us had and all of us continue to have. And he, with the knowledge that he probably didn't have that many years left, he did his best to run it, to cut to the chase. To, uh, to answer these questions and, and uh, address these uh, ladies' concerns. 
also because he was literally on his deathbed when he uh, uh, was writing all of this, he leisurely, sometimes too leisurely, took his time and colorfully digressed in a way that uh, you could see he intended to uh, uh, almost entertain as he informed and as he advised. And some of his little di digressions, uh, uh, you know, concerns uh, more or less uh, current, current issues and, and uh, people in the public eye that I, I don't recognize or, or uh, uh, English comedians or, or essayists that I, I don't recognize. And so uh, he goes off on these little, little tangents, which are in and of themselves fun. Well, one of these questions, oh, uh, we don't have the letters that ask the questions. So we more or less have to, for most of these uh, answers back, we more or less have to uh, uh, judge for ourselves what the, what the original question was if he doesn't come right out and said, you ask me this or you ask me that. But in this particular one, he actually does say it. And it's chapter 30. This is chapter 30 of... Uh, at least uh, the Falcon Press uh, edition of Magic Without Tears. It is available immediately in Kindle from several from several sources. Uh, and rather than to advise you to uh, uh, comb the internet to get a hard copy first edition at seven eight hundred dollars, I really would suggest that even if you think it's a pirated edition, for the time being, just to get the material into your brain, get the Kindle edition. That's what I'm reading from today, because I don't want to take my uh, uh, more precious uh, uh, hard copy out here in the, in the burning elements here. So I'm going to read you chapter 30 of Magic Without Tears. Do you believe in God is the title. Kara Saroh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. You are quite right as usual. True, we have gone over a great deal of the ground in various learned disquisitions of gods, angels, elves, et hoc genus omne. But God, with a capital G, in the singular, is a totally different pair of blutchers. Nicoir. Let me go back for just a moment to the meaning of belief. We agreed that the word was senseless except as it implies an opinion, instinct, conviction, what you please, so firmly entrenched in our natures that we act automatically as if it were true and certain without error. Perhaps even the essence of truth, Browning discusses this in Mr. Sludge, the Medium, got that out of the way. Good. The field is clear for an inquiry into this word God. He just took care of the belief. Part. Okay. We find ourselves in trouble from the start. We must define, and to define is to limit, and to limit is to reduce God to a God, or at best, the God. He must be omniscient, 
mercury, omnipotent, sulfur, and omnipresent, salt. Yet, to such a being, no purpose would be possible. So that all the apologies for the existence of evil crash. If there be no opposites of any kind, there can be no consistency. He cannot be two, he must be one. Yet, as obvious, as is obvious, he isn't. How do the Hindu philosophers try to get out of this quag? Evil is an illusion, has no real existence. Then what is the point of it? They say, not that, not that, denying him all attributes. He is, quote, that which is without quality, quantity or quality, unquote. They contradict themselves at every turn. Seeking to remove limit, they remove definition. Their only refuge is in superconsciousness. Splendid. But now belief has disappeared altogether. For the word has no sense unless it is subject to the laws of normal thought. Tut. You must be feeling it yourself. The further one goes, the darker the path. All I have written is somehow muddled and obscured. Magre, my fren frenzied struggle for lucidity, simplicity. It is this fault of my, is this the fault of my own sophistication? I ask myself, tell you what. I'll trot round to my masseuse, and I'll put it to her. She is a simple country soul, by no means overeducated, but intelligent, capable of a firm grasp of the principles of her job, a steady churchgoer on what she considers worthwhile occasions, dislikes the rector, but praises his policy of keeping his discourses within bounds. She's done quite a lot of thinking for herself, distrusts and despises the press and the radio, has no use for ready-made opinions. She shares with the flock their normal prejudices and phobias, but is not bigoted about them, and follows readily enough a line of simple, simply expressed destructive criticism when it is put to her. This is, however, only a temporary reaction. A day later, she would repeat the previous uh, in innatities as if they had never been demolished. In the late 50s, I guess, that's her age, she said, I sprang your question on her out of the blue, a la doodlebug premising merely that I had been asked the question and was puzzled how to answer it. Her reply was curious and surprising. Without a moment's hesitation and with great enthusiasm, quote, Quickly? Yes. Do you believe in God? And she said, Quickly? Yes. The spontaneous reservation struck me as extremely interesting. I said, of course, but suppose you think it over and out a bit. What am I to understand? She began glibly. He's a great big, and then broke off looking foolish. Then, all, then although omnipotent, he needed our help. We were all just as powerful. We were all just as powerful as he, for we were little bits of each other. But exactly how or to what end she did not make clear. 
an exclamation. Then there is the devil. She went on without a word from me for a long while, trying to uh, trying herself to keep into fresh knots with every phrase. Excuse me, tying herself up into fresh knots with every phrase. She became irreverent and then downright blasphemous, stopped short and began to laugh at herself, and so forth. But what struck me as curious and significant, in the main, her argument followed quite closely the lines which came naturally to me at the beginning of this letter. In the end, quote, curiouser and curiouser she arrived at a practically identical conclusion. She believed, but what she believed was nothing, with a capital N. As to our old criterion of what we imply in practice when we say that we believe, she began by saying, if we helped, God, in his mysterious plan, he would, in some fashion or other, look after us. But about this, she was even more vague than in the matter of intellectual conviction, quote, helping God meant, meant having behaving decently, meant behaving decently according to one's own instinctive ideas of what decency means. It is very encouraging that she should have seen without any prompting on my part to what a muddle the question necessarily led. And the very nice and very nice of me because it lets me out. Kara <laughs> Saror. Loves the law, love under will, fraternally 666. P.S. I thought it a good plan to put my fundamental position all by itself in a postscript to frame it. My observation of the universe convinces me that there are beings of intelligence and power of a far higher quality than anything we can conceive of as human that they are not necessarily based on the cerebral and nervous structures that we know. And that one, that the one and only chance for mankind to advance as a whole is for individuals to make contact with such beings. And that's how he answered the question, do I believe in God? Okay, that is it for today. Again, the book, electronically or not at the moment, the book is Magic Without Tears by Aleister Crowley. And that was chapter 33. Some of the chapters run into uh, many, many pages. Uh, there's a section on the three branches of magic, the white, yellow, and black. And uh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful uh, uh, insights. Even insights to Crowley's own imperial <laughs> Tory, <laughs> Tory ideas that he held tight, uh, obviously, till his death. But anyway... If you want to understand more about Aleister Crowley, if you want to understand more about magic and Thelema, you'll be uh, well advised to familiarize yourself with magic without tears. Anyway, from the parking lot of Home Depot, while it's still a re relatively, relatively cool, I bid you a good day and I hope to see you tomorrow for Saturday morning cartoons.